Hi, this is Arash and welcome to Epoxy channel. In this channel, we're going to talk about the epoxy resins uh, from the theoretical aspects to the most practical ones. So if this is the first video that you're watching or if you're interested in epoxy resins, please like and subscribe to our channel. Today, I'm going to present epoxy resins, TDS, SDS and COA documents. A technical data sheet is a technical summary of a product. It identifies the core features, specifications, and other criteria that the reader will need to understand. A TDS lists various pieces of information about the product. For example, product compositions, methods of use, operating requirements, common applications, warnings, and sometimes pictures of the product. TDS of products are usually created by the company producing them. The purpose of a technical data sheet is to give your reader the information they need from a technical angle to decide if this type of product might work for them fine. Therefore, a technical data sheet is not a sales document to persuade people to try your product without giving them all the necessary information they need. So, in a technical document, we need to exact, accurate, concise, and avoid sales talk. A technical data sheet may also be referred to as a product data sheet. TDS summarizes the uh, performance and other characteristics of a product in sufficient detail. It typically uh, begins with uh, describing the product. For epoxy resins, the general description provides information about the epoxy type, chemical compositions, main features, and other relevant information. It is just like the identity of the product. In the application sections, the main applications of the product is presented. For example, if the epoxy can be used for primers, adhesion direct to metals, and for example for top coats for metals, or as coatings for concrete, all these things has to be presented here. Often the main properties of the epoxies are presented uh, in this section in a descriptive manner. If it is a low viscosity or medium one curing properties, if it is a fast cure or ambient curing system, its adhesion and flexibility features, corrosion protection properties, etc. This port serves as a quick guide for the customers to decide. Technical features, depending on the manufacturer's deem, Various properties can be presented uh, uh, under this rubric. Common properties ones might be interested to see uh, in this section for epoxy resins include product appearance, epoxy uh, equivalent weight or EEW, solid contents, solvent percentage, viscosity, density, flash point, path life, drying time, etc. All, all these features and their relevance and importance for epoxy resins will be mm, described in separate future videos. For now, just remember that depending on the specified purpose, a data sheet may offer an average value, a typical value, or a typical range or engineering tolerances of dimensioned properties. Some epoxy datasheet provide formulation for the product uh, to be used for specific purposes. This part uh, might contain information about the type and ratio of hardness, feelers, diluents, pigments, etc. The formulation works as a guide to formulate a specific blend for a specific purpose, for example, for pipe coating. 
In the storage sections, as the name indicates information about the recommended storing conditions and the shelf life of the product at the condition, the mentioned condition is provided. Temperature range and the type of storing containers and the shell life are common pieces of information can be found under this title. In the handling and safety part, the safety recommendations about the handling, personal care equipment and the implementation process of the epoxy will be provided in brief. Also recommendations on waste handling might be provided here. TDS shouldn't include every feature of the product, just the most important ones. Remember, most data sheets are one or two pages and there are other documents for uh, that purpose, for example, sales document, brochures, etc. In general, specification section, provide the definition of your product and identify the three to four points you want to stand out. Consider specific questions, for example, what is the composition and type of the epoxy resins? Why should consumers use your um, product? How does it work from a technical perspective? For what purpose it can be used by the customers, etc. Often this section should be written in a positive language and should be concise. For example, in one paragraph. For application and uses, Start with the most general applications and narrow it down to more specific ones. Make sure that the use of the epoxy for the claimed application is valid. In technical features, present the typical relevant properties which are necessary to define your product. Depending on the specific purpose, a data sheet may present an average value, a typical value, a typical range or an engineering tolerance. Make sure you're providing enough data about storage conditions, packaging provided by the company, handling instructions, and safety concerns. Finally, if your product has certain certification, it must be presented in the TDS documents. At the end of the TDS documents, legal notes and contacts can be provided. Here you can see an example of uh, a TDS for an epoxy product. A safety data sheet formerly called Material Safety Data Sheets MSDS is a detailed informational document prepared by the manufacturer or importer of hazardous chemical. It describes the physical and chemical properties of the product. Employers and employees need the information contained uh, on SDS to protect themselves from hazardous chemical exposures and to work safely with the chemical products. The result will be a reduction in chemical source illnesses and injuries in the workplace. The new hazard communication standard or HCS requires that the chemical manufacturer, distributor or importer provide safety data sheets SDS for each hazardous chemical to users to communicate information on these hazards. OSHA requires that employee, employers maintain copies of SDS for each chemical in the workplace classified as hazardous. The manufacturer or distributor of the chemical itself is responsible for creating these safety data sheets. Many companies offer the service of collecting or writing and revising data sheets to ensure they are up to date and available for their subscriber or users. Here all the sections of uh, an SDS document will be introduced. Section 1 provides the identification of the substance mixture and the identification of the company. In this section, product identifications, 
relevant identify uses of the substance or mixture and uses advised against details of the supplier or the safety data sheets and emergency telephone numbers are provided. Section 2. Section 2 is hazards identification. In this section, classification of the substance or mixtures, label elements, and other hazards are provided. Section 3. Details with the composition information on ingredients uh, will be presented. So information on substances or mixture are presented here. Section 4 talks about the first aid measures. When people are exposed to product, here the description of the first aid measures, most important uh, symptoms and defects and effects are both acute and delayed and indication of any immediate medical attention and special treatment uh, will be presented. Section 5 is about firefighting measures. This part provides a guide for firefighting and it talks about extinguishing media, special hazards uh, arising from the substance or mixture and advice for firefighters in case of hazard. Section 6 presents accidental release measures. Personal precautions, protective equipment and emergency uh, procedures, environmental precautions, matters and material for uh, contaminated and cleaning up and references to other sections are provided here. Section 7, handling and storage guides provides in section 7, especially here, precautions for safe handling, conditions for safe storage, including any incompatibilities, and conditions uh, for a specific use provided. Section 8, section 8 presents the exposure controls and personal protection. Con here, control parameters and uh, exposure controls are provided. Section 9 deals with physical and chemical properties of the product. Information on uh, basic physical and chemical properties and other relative information can be found here. Section 10 concerns stability and reactivity of the product. So reactivity, chemical stability, possibility of hazardous reactions, conditions to avoid, incompatible materials and the hazardous decomposition products have to be presented here. Toxicological information are provided in section 11. In fact, information on toxicological effects are presented uh, in this section. Section 12 depicts ecological information, for example, toxicity, persistence and degradability, bioaccumulative potential, mobility in soil, results of PPT and WB. VP, WB assessment and other adverse effects are presented here. Section 13 provides guidelines on disposal of the product and identifies the proper waste treatment methods. Section 14 is perhaps one of the most important part of for sales fellows and presents the, the transport information details of the product. If a product uh, is dangerous good or not can be found here. Technically, this part presents the UN number, which is a number assigned to a dangerous good, UN proper shipping name, transport hazard classes, packaging group, environmental hazards, special uh, precautions for users, and transport in pork according to NX2 of Marple in the IBC code are presented here. Section 15 talks about regulatory information, safety, health and environmental regulations, legislation specific for the substance or mixtures, and chemical safety assessment details are presented here. Finally, Section 16 provides other information such as data and the latest versions of SDS and the producer's claim in technical notes. A certificate of analysis, COA, is an essential document in chemical distribution. 
that outlines all the tests uh, performed on the product before it is shipped to a customer. It is important for the customer to know that the product they are receiving adheres to their specific parameters and targets and to ensure that it meets their needs. COAs help your company prevent costly returns, replacement or customer complaints. What is provided in COA? Supplier information. This section uh, contains data regarding the material supplier, including their names, addresses, and other contact information. The other thing which is presented in COA is materials identification. Uh, the content in this section identifies the materials being uh, verified by their COA. And this usually contains common terms such as uh, lot numbers, product codes, and descriptions. We also have uh, transportation data in COAs. This uh, area generally includes the customer name and addresses, original uh, purchase order, or other details such as the item's uh, destination. This content is provided to meet shipping requirements and help the receiver in uh, confirming the material is authorized and is its delivery is anticipated. In the COA, we also have evidence of uh, conformance. This section holds the most important information in the COA. It states the specific characteristics, test results, or other evidences in terms of industry standards, regulatory requirements, or customer-specific requests. In some cases, the performance standards expected or will also be noted for reference. Finally, COA contains a signature data. This last section of the COA includes a signature indicating that the evidence presented was reviewed by a qualified and authorized product inspector. Without each of these sections and data, your COA will not count as a legitimate inspection of your product and you may uh, run into legal or business uh, ramifications. Okay, thanks for your attention. I hope you enjoy it. Please share your thoughts, comments or questions uh, and I will see you soon.